our list at number 10 is Rob Schneider, the hilarious actor well known for his work in comedy films. He was once taking on big roles starring in multiple movies next to other big stars like Adam Sandler. In the 1990s and early 2000s, he was everywhere. But nowadays you don't really see much of him anymore. Many would say that his time has passed. He's done a lot of the same comedy which had him playing similar parts each time and casting directors are probably looking for something more fresh and new. It doesn't help that some of his movies received very bad reviews and he was even sued for one of them. Back in 2010, investors sued him for his straight to DVD movie called The Chosen One because they wanted to recoup their investment since the movie didn't do very well. That doesn't really paint a pretty picture for other casting directors wanting to really work with him. It's been a few years since we have last seen him on a screen as Rob in the TV series Real Rob. Now his movies are mainly found in discount movie bins at the store and his latest booking was a video game back in 2018. At number 9 we have Julia Stiles. The actress first rose to stardom in the early 2000s with movies like 10 Things I Hate About You, Down to You and Save the Last Dance. She took home a number of Teen Choice Awards during the prime of her career. Her career was expected to blossom from there but it took a turn for the worse when her movies A Guy Thing, Mona Lisa Smile and The Omen all crashed at the box office. The actress spoke on her career and told an interviewer and I quote, I think audiences, producers and directors included develop crushes on actors and then lose interest and move on to the next one. She did admit that there are a handful of actors that are able to sustain interest throughout the years but sadly she wasn't one of them. She hasn't been seen since 2017 when she booked a role in the TV series Riveria. She is rumored to be in an upcoming movie called Hustlers where she booked the role as Jennifer. The movie has some big actors in it like JLo and apparently alongside her is Cardi B. Styles can't be found in any of the behind the scenes or promotions that are currently out so we're guessing that she is a secondary role or character which is a great job to book but nothing compared to what she used to do. Taking the number 8 spot on our list is Hayden Christensen. His career should have taken off when he played Anakin Skywalker in the Star Wars trilogy. However, he received more praise for his other work before that in A Life as a House and Shattered Glass. When auditioning for the role of Anakin, he was chosen for the role over 1500 other possibilities. It was unfortunate that his performance didn't wow anyone like his other work did. He took home two Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Supporting Actor. Since then, the actor says it's been hard for him to find work ever since. He says that people can't get past his Anakin character and could only book some smaller roles in some films. For three years, he was in films that received negative reviews and even worse box office results. After that time, the actor said he pulled the plug on acting and bought a farm with his wife and kid instead. He has to make a living somehow and acting just isn't cutting it anymore. In the last four years, he's only been credited for four projects on IMDb and none of them that are recognizable. In spot number seven is Edward Furlong. He's best known for his role as John Connor in the 1991 Terminator 2 Judgment Day. He was starring alongside two huge stars, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton. The role made him incredibly successful which would make you think he was on to bigger and better things from there on out. However, only three years after the successful movie, one director claimed the young actor was, and I quote, clearly on a path to disaster. Unfortunately, his prediction happened to be true. It seemed like the young actor couldn't handle the pressures of being in the business so he turned to drinking and drugs, racking up multiple arrests over the years. He had arrests for drug possession, assault and stealing lobsters from a supermarket. During an interview with People in 2006, he simply said, Hollywood f me up man. Later in the interview, he said he had turned his life around but that didn't seem to be the case. After that, he had more than one arrest regarding domestic turmoils. We haven't seen him in anything in years and to be honest, we probably wouldn't even recognize him. At number 6 is Phoebe Cates. Back in the 80s, she was one of the biggest names in Hollywood which is why it was hard to understand why she just kind of fizzled out of the spotlight. She made her first big debut in the movie Paradise and continued to have success in movies which had her fans believing she was here to stay. You may remember her from the later movie she did like The Anniversary Party or Gremlins. In 1989, she got married to Kevin Klein, a very successful actor who we saw as Maurice in the 2017 Beauty and the Beast live action movie. Klein opened up saying that when they decided to start a family, they didn't want work to take away from their time with the children. He told Playboy, and I quote, We have agreed to alternate so that we're never working at the same time. But whenever it's been her slot to work, Phoebe has chosen to stay with the children. It seems like she quietly just kind of left the industry and retired 
retired from acting just to be a mom. She's done acting, but she still spends a lot of time doing charity work. Her son has type 1 diabetes, so she devotes her time towards raising funds for a cure. She also started her own boutique in 2005 called Blue Tree. She says, I quote, I always wanted to have a general store. If I could have a photo booth and sold candy, I would have. Hey, the heart wants what it wants, and I guess hers just doesn't want acting anymore. Halfway through the list at number 5 is Randy Quaid. Yes, Dennis Quaid has a brother and they look nothing alike so don't feel bad if you didn't put the connection together. Dennis has had a very successful acting career where he spent years being called a Hollywood heartthrob. However, Randy has had a successful career also with 119 acting credits to his name on IMDb, but he took on different roles than his brother did due to the difference in their looks. In 2009, his problems began when he and his wife were arrested for fraud by using an invalid credit card at an inn. They they were released on bail but then failed to appear in court and that's when warrants for their arrest were issued. Eventually the two of them appeared in court but the charges against the actor were dropped due to lack of evidence. Lucky him. Only one year later the two of them were charged again but this time for burglary after they spent five days staying in the guest house in a home they once owned. Once again they failed to appear in court and warrants for their arrest were issued again. Turns out they moved to Canada but they ended up getting arrested for their outstanding warrants. Taking the number 4 spot is Mara Wilson, aka Matilda. She was one of the most well known and beloved child stars of the 90s, appearing in the movies Missed Out Fire and then Matilda. But after she rose to fame, she disappeared from the spotlight in the blink of an eye. Years down the road in 2016, she explains why she quit Hollywood in a memoir she wrote called Where Am I Now? True Stories of Girlhood and Accidental Fame. She explains that she didn't fit the look that Hollywood wanted as she got older. She said, I wasn't getting any parts. I realized I don't fit their idea of what a Hollywood actress looks like. There's no room for me here. It's hard to come out of that scene and without some serious doubts about yourself. That's when she began to immerse herself in school, theater, and writing. After she graduated college, she admits in her book that she's never felt better. She writes, Things have gotten a lot better since I left Hollywood. A great weight lifted. Now, she lives in New York, where she's become a part of the comedy and writing scene. She happily lives in Queens with her two cats and says that yes, she still gets recognized as Matilda. But that is no surprise because she literally looks the exact same. At spot number three is Chris Owen. Back in 1999, the actor made a name for himself by playing Chuck Sherman, aka the Shermanator, in the hit comedy movie American Pie. He reprised the role for all the films and even in the spin off American Pie Presents Bandcamp. Outside of the franchise, he had other success in shows like Seventh Heaven and The Mentalist. However, his career faded and he was off the Hollywood radar for a number of years. In 2014, New York Daily News reported he was working as a waiter in a restaurant in California. In the interview, he said, Life doesn't always go the way you planned. I love acting and this job lets me stay in the fight. The good news is the article helped him book two small film roles after it was published. Since then he's been able to pop up in a few things here or there like an episode on Criminal Minds back in 2016. We can't blame the guy for trying, I have some serious respect for him. Alright guys, at number 2 is Matthew Fox. He had a successful acting career taking on roles in the hit TV series Haunted and Lost. However, over the years he's made a name for himself as one you don't want to hire. He attempted a movie career which never really took off. Both of his movies, Alex Cross and World War Z, were box office flops, and his role for one of them was mostly cut out of the final product. In his personal life, he's made some nasty headlines, including allegations from former co stars that he beats women. One allegation came from a woman accusing him of hitting a female bus driver. He's also been charged with a few DUIs. He publicly talked about giving up on acting, which also makes it harder to cast him. During an interview, he said if he doesn't get quality opportunities, he won't take anything at all. This is probably why he is no credits to his name since 2015. Taking our number one spot is Drew Barrymore, a very successful actress who grew up in the spotlight. She began as a child star and her career continued to take off from there. The reason we don't see her anymore is because she no longer gets booked for roles like she used to. However, she is okay with it. She has made it clear that she will only take certain roles because she wants to be a good role model to her daughters. It limits the option for casting directors to hire her, which is why she turned to the producer side of things. And just like her acting was successful, so is her her 
production company. She teamed up with Jimmy Fallon's wife to create the company, which has some successful hits like How to Be Single and Santa Clarita Diet. This is why you can see Drew starring in the Netflix series because she actually produced it. It probably would have been different if she didn't produce it because we haven't seen her in a big Hollywood hit since the movie Blended back in 2014. I personally still love her though, she's the best. Starting off our list at number 10 is Cameron Diaz. Have you ever wondered what happened to this hilarious and beautiful actress? At one point in time, she was showing up in pretty much every movie that was brought to the big screen, but then out of nowhere, we just kind of stopped seeing her. I didn't realize until recently that she actually hasn't been in anything since 2014. That was her last big year in the industry when we saw her in The Other Woman, Sex Tape, and Annie all in one year. And we haven't seen her since. Turns out last year, she started making jokes that she retired and so did her friends and previous co-stars. In March 2018, her close friend Selma Blair did an interview and said, I would have liked to do a sequel, but Cameron's retired from acting. She's like, I'm done. This had Hollywood and fans wondering why the 45 year old actress chose to retire without telling anyone. Not that she owes anyone an explanation, it just would have been nice to have a heads up. In 2018, it was confirmed that she has retired from acting and is now living a very low key life. Since seeing her on the big screen, she has tied the knot to Benji Madden and has also been putting privacy above everything else. She turned her focus to wellness and has since released a few books now on health and aging. At number 9 is Chuck Norris. The actor has had a widely successful career, which is probably why it's been weird to have him missing from the acting industry. He has been a household name for nearly 50 years, but he recently made the decision to leave Hollywood without much of an explanation. Back in 2005, he turned his focus on his martial arts experience and debuted the World Combat League in the hopes of giving young fighters a chance to shine. He was still finding time to act, but he took a long break between 2005 to 2012. We saw him make a return in The Expendables 2 back in 2012, and then three years later in 2015, when he was a voice on the TV series The Goldbergs. Some fans believed he might have been making his return to acting, but during the 10 years, he only had two credits to his name, and we haven't seen him ever since. Next up at number 8 is Shelley Duvall. You might remember her for her legendary performance as Wendy Torrance in The Shining. She established herself as one of the best actresses of her time with her extraordinary performances. However, in 2012, she disappeared out of the public eye and no one knew what the actress was going through in her personal life. It wasn't until 2016 that we got an explanation for her sudden disappearance. The actress appeared on the Dr. Phil show where she revealed that she had been struggling with a mental illness over the years. In her interview, you can tell that she is mentally unstable because she was discussing the fear of the Sheriff of Bottingham, which is a fictional character in Robin Hood. Not only that, but she was also claiming that the late Robin Williams is still alive and is actually shape-shifting. I don't think he's dead. Yeah, you don't think he's dead? No. Where do you think he is? Shape-shifting. <laughs> She went on to explain that she has seen him before and that he looks good in some forms and other forms he doesn't. Once the interview was released, Dr. Phil was heavily criticized for airing the interview which was deemed as exploitative of her mental illness. The interview is very hard to watch because you can see that the actress is truly struggling. In at number 7, we have Ashley Green. Her career took off when she booked the role as Alice Cullen in the Twilight movie series. Between the years of 2009 and 2012, Ashley Green rocked up five Teen Choice Awards for her role, and she was even named Superstar of Tomorrow at the Young Hollywood Awards in 2012. It looked like her career would continue to take off from there, but over the years, it kind of just fizzled away. None of the movies she booked after that took home more than $1 million, except for her movie The Apparition in 2012, which made $15 million. However, the budget for the film was $17 million, so it wouldn't be considered a win since casting directors and agents want actors who will bring them some money. Since then, she's had a hard time finding decent work, and nothing compares to her years with the Twilight franchise. Sliding into number 6 is Vince Vaughn, a very successful actor who has a huge list of movies like Old School and Wedding Crashers. He's mainly recognized for his comedic characters, which might be the reason he stopped booking lead roles over the years. A pattern began to unravel in his career where he only played the same type of character over and over again. Some would say that his charm has worn off. He's been out of the spotlight for some time now and turned to the production side of things where he 
has quite the list on his resume. He hasn't given up on acting though, he does book whatever he can get his hands on. He's done some films which made it into film festivals, but not theaters, and he might be returning to a bigger movie with Liam Hemsworth. In October 2018, it was rumored that he'd be doing a movie called Arkansas, but nothing has been mentioned ever since then. We're not sure what his role would be, or if it's really happening. All we know is he hasn't starred in a big Hollywood movie in years. Halfway through our list at number 5 is Catherine Zeta-Jones. She was wildly popular in the early 2000s, where she had great success for her movies, even taking home the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her role in Chicago. But over the past decade, her career dwindled away, and according to Catherine, it's because of her age. She spoke out on the issue during an interview and said, I quote, It's not that there aren't great stories to be told about women in their 40s, it's just that the big bosses in Hollywood feel that the demographic of moviegoers are less interested. During the years of 2014 to 2016, she had zero credits to her name. Since then, she booked a small role in a TV series called Feud, and more recently booked a role on the show Queen America. The show's network, however, is Facebook Watch, which is a video on demand service operated by Facebook, which I've never heard of. So many people haven't even heard of it or seen her show. The show ran for a season in 2018 and has yet to be confirmed for another one. All right, guys, at number four, we have Katherine Heigl. The actress was once taking the lead in every movie in the later 2000s. Back to back, she starred in Knocked Up, 27 Dresses, and then The Ugly Truth. At the same time, she also starred on the TV hit series Grey's Anatomy. As time went on, she was no longer able to book the lead in big Hollywood movies like she was known for doing. One big reason why could be that she dissed some of the movies that she worked on. She publicly spoke badly about her biggest blockbuster hit, Knocked Up. She told Vanity Fair in 2008, and I quote, It paints women as shrews, as humorless and uptight. I'm playing such a bitch. It was hard for me to love the movie. She also went on to diss her time on Grey's Anatomy and even pulled herself from the race for an Emmy nomination. She hasn't had the best reputation over the years, and it didn't help when Forbes reported her as Hollywood's most overpaid actress in December 2013. They stated studios return on investment of just $3.50 for every $1 she was paid. That's nothing when you compare it to an actress like Natalie Portman, who is $42.70 for every $1 paid. Needless to say, we haven't seen her in Hollywood movie in years. You can find her playing a secondary role on the TV series Suits, and that's about it. All right, guys, at number three is Lelaney, who you might know as Hilary Duff's BFF in the Disney series Lizzie McGuire. The show skyrocketed the whole cast into fame, and it appeared like the world was at their fingertips. However, not long after the show stopped airing, Lelaney completely vanished from the public eye. She didn't even appear in the big screen release of the Lizzie McGuire movie, which fans were super bummed about. She did an interview with Huffington Post where she refers to the years after Disney Channel as dark. She claims she went nuts and made bad decisions, one of them which had her arrested for the felony possession of crystal meth in 2008. Things got even worse for the young starlet as she was a no-show for her court date appearance. That's when the judge issued a $50,000 bench warrant for her arrest. Last we heard about the case was that she enrolled in the Asian American Drug Abuse Program. Her IMDb shows that every few years she booked a somewhat of a smaller project, but her record remains with a serious felony charge that she can't undo. Here we are at number two with Rick Moranis. The actor was adored for his role as Wayne Zielinski in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. The actor's career was a massive success, appearing in things like The Flintstones, Brother Bear, and Gravedale High. In the 80s and early 90s, he was one of the hottest comedy actors around. Unfortunately, in 1997, his wife at the time passed away from a battle with breast cancer. The actor says he realized it was too difficult to make movies and raise his two children without his wife. He decided to walk away from from the spotlight and focused on being a single dad. He didn't appear in anything from 1997 to 2001. He then continued to do some smaller voiceover work for the next 17 years. He was pretty much off of Hollywood's radar. In 2018, his voice was heard in an episode on the TV series The Goldbergs, but that is it. The actor has opened up about it and said he meant for it to be a short break at first, but during his break, he realized he didn't really miss the industry. He enjoyed his time off and enjoyed being a dad. Taking our number one spot is Amanda Bynes. The Nickelodeon star was once in the prime of her career. She had a very successful career which began in 1998 and went all the way until 2010. Through different TV shows and movies, she 
had a huge fan base to support her as an actress, me being one of them. But the last movie we saw her in was Easy A all the way back in 2010. After that, her career came to a complete halt and no one really knew why. It wasn't until she began making headlines and not for good reason. In 2012, she was arrested for driving drunk and hitting the side of a cop car. Luckily, no one was hurt, only minor paint damage was done to both vehicles. After that, fans started seeing Amanda get a little bit out of control. She began tweeting inappropriate comments about other stars and even called President Barack Obama and his wife ugly. She also pulled a Britney Spears and shaved half of her head and then filled both her cheeks with dermal piercings. She started walking the Hollywood streets in crazy colored wigs, trying to hide her face from the camera. In May of 2013, she was once again arrested, but this time for possession of marijuana and reckless endangerment after she threw a bong out of her Manhattan apartment window. Just two months later, Bynes was placed under involuntary psychiatric hold after she started a fire on a stranger's driveway. It was made clear that the actress was suffering from some sort of mental illness. In 2018, she came back to do an interview where she opened up about her past and she said she hopes to return to the acting industry. I am hoping too, girl. She was one of my favorite actresses as a kid. Starting off our list at number 10 is Angus T. Jones. The young actor made his big break on the show Two and a Half Men, but quit the show after 10 long seasons. His reasoning for leaving the show was because he felt the show was filth. He even went as far as telling viewers to stop watching it. Angus explains that as he got older, he felt the show went against his religious views. It was reported that the young actor was earning about $350,000 an episode, but he still felt confident in his decision to walk away from the show. After leaving, he joined different Christian groups like Forerunner Chronicles, where he made testimonial videos about his faith. He ended up becoming the president of Entertainment at Tonight, which is an events company co-founded by Diddy's son, Justin. When asked if he has any interest in returning to acting, he says, the door is definitely still open for me to do that, but I am taking things slowly. I'm kind of liking the ability to travel and to move around at a moment's notice and not have to be in one spot for years at a time. Well, that is fair enough. Good news is he's still young and has a lot of time to make his return. At number nine is Brittany Ashton Holmes. Ever wonder what happened to that adorable little Darla from Little Rascals? You know, the girl Alfalfa secretly loves and writes his famous line to? Dear Darla, I hate your stinking guts. You make me vomit. I mean, if I got a letter that started out like that, I might quit acting too. The young actress was only five years old when she got the part in the movie remake of the classic show. The whole cast was great, but she definitely stole the show. After the movie was released, she continued to act, but only got a handful of gigs. She ended up retiring from acting very early on in her career after she finished the 1996 sci-fi movie Inhumanoid. She went off to school and is currently working on getting a degree in political science and is now 30 years old. Before MySpace was deleted, she wrote, I was an actress when I was little and did this movie called Little Rascals. It's like really embarrassing to watch and I don't want to act anymore. She is still living in LA though, so maybe one day we will see her on our screen once again. Swiping the number eight spot is Peter Ostrom, also known as Charlie Bucket in the original 1971 Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The child actor was just 12 years old when he was selected to play the role. After the movie, he went on to say that he really enjoyed working on the film, but that he decided not to sign a three film contract when the movie was over. When he returned home from filming the movie, he says he grew an interest in horses and was interested in becoming a veterinarian one day. He no longer had an interest in being part of the Hollywood world. He ended up going to Cornell University College College of Veterinary and Medicine in 1984 to receive his certificate. His earnings from the movie are actually what funded his purchase of his very first horse. During an interview with Express, he said, Looking back, my paycheck was paltry, but it was during filming that I became interested in medicine. So I bought my first horse with my earnings, and that started my current career path as a vet. Later on in 2005, he moved to New York with his wife and two children, and as of 2018, he works out of the countryside veterinary and clinic where he mainly works with horses and cows. As for acting, he says that he wanted to live a normal life and had declined reporters and interviews for a long period of time. He did admit that sometimes he misses acting, but says his life as a vet has also been his dream for many years. Sliding into our number 7 spot is Jack Gleason. The young actor played Joffrey in HBO's Game of Thrones. His character was one of the most hated characters in television history for being so vile and repulsive. He played the character from 2011 to 2014 but after the boy was killed off the show, 
Gleason decided he wanted to step away from acting. The actor was always the first one to say that he is nothing like his character and left the business saying he didn't enjoy it as much as he used to. He was in the prime of his career but went on to tell interviewers that he didn't want to be in the spotlight and actually wanted to go back to school. He decided to enroll himself at the Trinity College in Dublin to study philosophy and theology. During an interview he said and I quote, I hate celebrity culture. So he returned back home to school and is also a part of the Dublin based theatre company called Collapsing Horse. In at number 6 is Ariana Richards. The child actor rose to fame with her role in the original Jurassic Park movie in 1993. She continued to pursue acting and even reprised her role in 1997 for the Lost World Jurassic Park. Between 1998 and 2013, she seemed to have taken a break from acting as we didn't see her taking on any new roles. Back in 2013, she showed up in a TV movie called Battle Dogs, which led people to believe she might be making her way back into Hollywood. But she actually left the world of Hollywood behind and we haven't seen her on the screen ever since. Turns out the actress is now a painter and a very successful one at that. Her artwork is famously known because she does lifelike portraits where people can order them as special gifts. I'm not gonna lie, I think it is a little refreshing for a young woman to leave Hollywood and still pursue a different form of art and be successful at it. She's only 39 years old so she still has plenty of time to make her way back into Hollywood if she really wanted to. Halfway through our list at number 5 is Jack Nicholson. The man is titled a legend when it comes to acting, which is probably why it's no surprise that he can do whatever he pleases to do. Stepping away from the limelight was one of his decisions that left people wondering why he just upped and left. Back when he was doing an interview with The Sun, the actor opened up and said, I'm not going to work until the day I die. That's not why I started this. I mean, I'm not driven. I was driven, but now I'm not. I don't have to be out there anymore. In fact, there's part me that never really liked being out there. Well, I guess it is as simple as that. We haven't seen him acting since 2010 when he took on the role as Charles in How Do You Know. Last year, in 2018, it was rumored that he would be coming out of retirement to star in the American remake of Tony Erdman. Nothing has yet been confirmed though. Taking the number 4 spot is Jonathan Taylor Thomas, also known as JTT or the son of Tim Allen on the hit TV show Home Improvement. When the young actor left the show, preteen hearts were shattered all over the world. At just 16 years old, the actor decided he wanted to leave the popular television show in order to live a more normal life. Many people didn't understand his choice, but he says it was just something he had to do. When speaking on it back in 2013, he said, I had been going nonstop since I was 8 years old. Years old. I wanted to go to school, to travel, and have a bit of a break. An education is more surefire guarantee that you have possibilities open to you. JTT actually went to Harvard University and studied philosophy and history and finished his degree at Columbia University. When he left Home Improvement, he didn't completely disappear from Hollywood. He could be found in a few movies, doing voiceover work, and made some guest appearances on TV shows. But he couldn't be found between the years 2006 to 2013 as he declined being part of the home improvement finale, which is why fans went crazy when he appeared on Tim Allen's show Last Man Standing in 2013 to 2015. But his appearance was short lived and we haven't seen him back since. Alright guys, at number 3 is Gene Hackman. The actor blessed our screens for years, but we haven't seen him since 2004 when he starred in Welcome to Mooseport. It's been said that he never officially retired, but we kind of just figured it out on our own, seeing as he hasn't worked on anything in years. Not to mention he is 89 years old now. Ever Ever since he left the acting industry, he's taken his talent and skill to print instead. He began working with archaeologist Daniel Menahan to write three historical fiction novels. That's right, our man Hackman is known to be an author now. On top of his fiction novels, he also wrote two solo ones. In 2011, he wrote Payback at Morning Peak, and in 2013, he wrote a book called Pursuit. While fans are still missing him on the screen, I'm sure, they must be glad he's still putting his wit and talent into something. In at number two, is Jake Lloyd. The once child star took on the role of the young Anakin Skywalker in the highly anticipated Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. What would seem like the opportunity of a lifetime was quickly taken from him when the movie didn't live up to its expectations. It was said that his performance got lumped into the overall fan disappointment of the movie. Before that though, he did book some other roles on TV series like ER and The Pretender. But it seems like after Star Wars, he left his acting career behind. Between the years 1999 
2009 to 2002. He has smaller credits, but mostly for being the voice on Star Wars video games. Since then, the actor has made headlines, but for all the wrong reasons. We have learned that he suffers from schizophrenia and also had a few run ins with the law. Take our number one spot is Danny Lloyd. For decades, horror fans have been asking author Stephen King, what happened to that kid from The Shining? Well, I am here to give you the very unscary truth. He became a pig farmer and a science teacher. The actor at the time was only five years old and now he is in his 40s, married, and a father of six. In 2013, he did his first episode since he was a kid with Daily News, where he opened up about his normal life, saying that people don't recognize him when he goes out in public. He explained that he did continue acting, but ended up giving up when he was a teenager. He said, I quote, We kept trying for several years until I was in high school and I stopped at about 14 with almost no success. Danny says he enjoyed being in the movie, but went on to work at a local Walmart and drove a tractor on a hog farm. Now he teaches biology at a community college outside of Louisville. He watched The Shining for the first time when he was 16 years old with a group of friends and says that he was not scared. Just a few weeks ago, the sequel to the movie dropped its official trailer for Dr. Sleep and fans were a bit butthurt that Danny won't be returning to reprise his role. Starting off the list at number 10 is Sean Connery. The actor first rose to fame during the 60s when he became the first ever James Bond. That is quite the title to have. After that, he continued to take on roles in box office hits like The Untouchables, Highlander, The Rock, and we all know it didn't hurt his career when he also played Indiana Jones' dad in the movie. We know that his last film before he retired was The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen back in 2003. This was the movie where he got into a fist fight with the director, Stephen Norrington. It wasn't revealed until years later just exactly why he starred in a movie he hated so much with the director that he got into an altercation with. Turns out he had turned down both Lord of the Rings and The Matrix, so he felt like there was no way he could turn this one down. He told Entertainment Weekly, I got offered The Lord of the Rings and I turned it down because I didn't understand it. I was offered The Matrix twice and I turned it down because I didn't understand it. I don't understand this movie, but I will be damned if I'm going to turn it down. After that, he basically called it quits on acting and he has been enjoying retirement ever since. At number 9 is the beautiful actress Meg Ryan. She has had a very successful acting career which is why it was shocking when she just decided to walk away from it. We haven't seen her in a movie since 2015 when she took on a minor role and many of us didn't even know she quit, she kind of just disappeared. We only found out last year on June 9th, 2018 when she joined her once co-star Gwyneth Paltrow for a panel discussion in LA. She sat down to do an interview for Gwen's In Goop Health event. The two of them talked candidly about working in Hollywood and Meg's decision to quit acting a few years ago. Meg spoke about it by saying, I didn't really aim to be an actor. I was a journalism major at school and a curious person and I wanted to go back into the world and figure out who I was, am, in relationship to other things and other people and other environments. Over the years, she has majorly stepped out of the spotlight and rarely makes appearances at public events. That doesn't stop the paparazzi from snapping some pictures though. So I number 8 spot is Dylan Sprouse. You would know him and his twin brother Cole Sprouse from the Disney channels The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and then all their other Disney appearances after that like The Sweet Life on Deck. Both of them had huge success at a young age. It was reported that they were earning $40,000 per episode at the height of their career. In 2011, the twins pulled away from the public eye without any explanation why. In 2013, some customers were startled at a coffee shop in the East Village when Dylan Sprouse was pouring lattes and craft beers. Turns out that Dylan went on to study at NYU, which is where he developed a passion for brewing. He did an internship for some time at a Brooklyn bourbon distillery and has a passion for mead in particular. He is now running his own brewery, which he added into the William Vale Hotel in Williamsburg called the All Wise Meadery. During an interview with Vanity Fair in 2018, he refers to acting as a commission type job and says that the meadery provides a stable paycheck. He also admitted that he often gets compared to his brother Cole Sprouse, who landed a lead role as Jughead in the hit TV series Riverdale. When asked about his brother's TV show, he said, Don't tell my brother, but I've only seen the first episode. If I'm being honest, when I first saw Riverdale, I had no idea which twin it was. So he could totally just pretend it was him and take the credit for it. Taking the number seven spot is Karen Parsons. She's famous for playing Hillary Banks on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Outside of the show, she had other acting success, but we haven't seen her on the big screen since 2002. Her last movie was 13 Moons, and her last TV series 
was the job. She up and left her acting career after that and has been dedicating herself to changing the lives of other people. In 2013, she founded a nonprofit organization that teaches kids all about figures in black history. She called it Sweet Blackberry. She did an interview with Huffington Post where she spoke about the importance of her organization. She said, I quote, When you only hear about a handful of stories, the message is, every once in a while a special black person comes along. And that's a dangerous message to send to everyone. It does nothing but harm the idea of black people. I think it's really important to tell these stories because there are lessons to be learned. Incredible lessons about perseverance and determination and opportunity to do something great. Her organization did a project that shared the story of the first black female pilot named Bessie Coleman, which ended up being a huge success. In at number 6 is Michael Schofling. He won the hearts of many young girls when he took on the role of Jake Ryan in the classic movie 16 Candles. He started the movie back in 1984 and quit acting not that long after in 1991. Fans were wondering whatever happened to the heartthrob and we later found out that in between booking roles, he got into making furniture. He now has a successful furniture business in his home in Pennsylvania. When asked about why he made the career path switch, he told LA Times, actors spend most of their time out of work, so I actually spend more time making furniture. The thing about furniture that's much better than acting is that it's just me. There's no director, no script, the concept is me, unless a client wants something. In film work, you do the best you can under the given circumstances, but you don't have control. At least, I don't. Well, I'm sure people would love the chance at buying a chair from Jake Ryan. Halfway through at number 5 is Barrett Oliver. Some say he was the most talented child actor of the 80s after he took on the role as Bastion in The Never Ending Story. After the success that 1984 movie brought him, he went on to star in movies movies like The Twilight Zone and The Secret Garden. People thought he was well on his way to be the next Hollywood star, but he ended up ditching acting at the young age of 16. In 2004, there was an update on where he was at in his life and it confirmed that he was a photography teacher in California, where he holds workshops and demonstrations about the craft. One fan visited his photo exhibition in California and posted online saying, he has a full beard, wears glasses, and has long hair. His voice was recognizable, he wasn't really tall, and spoke quietly. And let me tell you, they were not lying. He doesn't show any signs of regret or desire to return to Hollywood or acting, and fans aren't totally sure if he would even be able to at this point. Here we are at number 4 with Jeff Cohen. You might remember him from his role as Chunk in the legendary The Goonies. The classic movie came out in 1985 and he continued his acting career up until 1991. When asked why he left the industry, he cracks jokes saying that puberty forced him into early retirement as a child actor. He explains that as he got older, finding work was a lot more difficult. Once acting was out out of the picture, he found a passion for law and attended the University of California, Berkeley, earning a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. The former actor went on to become a lawyer, and in 2008, he was named one of the top 35 executives under 35 years of age. He continues to be a successful lawyer and says that acting has benefited his legal career because it makes him more empathetic for his clients and less academic. He has also done work for the Huffington Post and BNBC from time to time about business and legal subjects so I guess he's still in Hollywood in some sense. Alright guys, at number 3 is Frankie Muniz, who you might know as Malcolm from the classic TV series Malcolm in the Middle. The show ran from 2000 to 2006 and is basically what put him on the map in the acting world. He also did other movies like Big Fat Liar, Agent Cody Banks, and Sharknado. Needless to say, he had a wildly successful career. His acting resume is stacked with a number of different credits. Which is why I was so stunned when I found out that he walked away from Hollywood and is now running an olive oil shop. Yes, that is a thing. Turns out acting is no longer his main focus anymore, although you will see him popping up in some projects once in a while. After he left his full time acting career, he and his fiance Paige Price now own an olive oil shop called Outrageous Olive Oils and Vinegars in Old Town Scottsdale. If you go, you will actually spot him sitting behind the register. The now 32 year old says, We had been customers at the store before and we just knew we liked the product and we wanted to do something together. Now it's become our lives. The former actor who was once practically drowning in fame, money and success says that he's found a new passion, payroll. He said, I love doing payroll. I love doing anything with the financials. I'm a numbers guy. So this has been like a dream come true for me. Amen. To each their own.